So, next segment. We're gonna drive one of our recent priced cars. Good old Zonda C12S. I need to tune this thing. Specifically, brakes, because the Zonda's brakes are notoriously terrible. A semi racing suspension because I don't know how to tune suspension properly. Then we need to upgrade this thing. We can't turbo it. We need tires. We need some weight reduction. That's an expensive weight reduction. get a clutch so we can get some better gear shifts. Let's get a one-way LSD. We're setting this car up to drive fast before we put in the upgrades even. Now do we need 900 horsepower? Probably not. I think 700 will be enough actually. think we need to do anything else. So, why did I just put a ton of money into the drivability of the car and not necessarily power? Our next race is Italian Avant Garde. And you know what? This thumbnail picture of the event sums up the experience perfectly. Yeah, good old Zonda C12S on the right and then looks like a race car on the left. I wonder why. You can only use the Zondas, which cool, a one wake, two tracks. I wonder why the thumbnail, this is maybe the most intentional thumbnail in the whole game. That's why. So the Zonda race car you cannot actually buy in Gran Turismo 3. It's um, just not possible. The Japanese version allows you to drive every Italian car. Oh no! I have to drive with the right stick. I forgot to set it back to R2. Ah, oh, I gotta switch it back. Oh well, there goes my win-loss ratio. You can just not drive manual transmission with the right stick. It's too awkward. I literally forgot to set it back. Oh well. Power is going to be an issue on a straight line, but drivability is going to be the biggest issue. We'll hit top speed pretty fast, but we gotta keep up with this crowd. I have seen the verified bots. And low third in gear, we're still like super fast. Yeah, the stage 2 is enough power. Transmission, maybe we could have gone with an upgrade. What's the drivability that we really need? Eh, yeah, that speed's fine. It's a little slow, we hit the limiter. But it's fine.
Yeah, do not fall for scams on Discord. There's tons of those out there. Whoa, we got punted by a race car. I think it's there's no rubber banding on this series, but since the field is all the same car, everybody's spread out the same way. You just gotta pick off cars one by one. Fourth gear. The gears are so short on this car. This is literally killing my car. So we have no downforce here. We need that giant rear wing. The rest of the track we can keep up with AI, but that first two corners are so bad for the car. What's the dog doing? This is where I seem to make the most time on the AI this middle section. So yeah, it wasn't the power I needed. I didn't need the 900 horsepower. Even though it's cool to have the 900 horsepower, you don't need it. How's Turbo doing? He's doing pretty good. Um, he's real chill still. He's doing swim classes so he can keep his legs going. He actually dropped position because of that terrible first corner. Whoa, we got punted. I'm getting bullied by these other race cars. This is. I mean, if you put on the 900 horsepower upgrade, it's not that hard, but this is probably one of the most like tricky races to do, just because the Zonda C12S drives totally differently from the race car. Our tire strategy is a backup, because I believe the Zondas do pit on lap 9, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not 100% sure. And will our tires last to lap 9? As I totally do a dirty overtake on second. Alright. Well, probably one of the better corners I've done in that. I'm trying not to, you know, get killed by the AI. Our tires are holding up surprisingly well, though. This should be good to go to the end. One more. Hairpin ass. Let's go. We are finally leading halfway through the race. Now it's going to hold up the AI for the last five laps.
or not being a terrible card, this card really picks up revs quite easily. And that's because it has a low gear ratio. The fourth gear is like really good on this card. Splitting the road there. It's always the weirdest part of the track. I always wonder if you can clip through it if you hit the angle just right. Now we're back to hot lapping. I tried this challenge when I was a kid, and I thought this was impossible. But it turns out I just sucked. Oh, I made a good lap and then I messed up this last corner. Anyway, what's the time going to be? A 118? Yep, I thought that was a good lap. I'm going to get the snap. Why'd you get S like... <laughs> like, do you shave? Like, do I do normal human stuff? As if, like, what? I'm an alien? Like, of course. You'll see me with the giant neck beard. Do you eat food? Yes. Oh my god, he eats food? Like I'm a Harambe in a zoo. We are pulling a gap now to the race cars. Might have even gotten away with the stage one, perhaps. I'm hungry. I don't know if you heard my stomach just rumble, but it just rumbled. What should I have for lunch today? Whoa, big step out. If it wasn't for that wall, I would have been fully spin -outed. That was bad. My tires aren't even dead, I'm just driving sloppily. I can kind of chill because we have a steep gap to the leads of the, um, the rest of the pack. And yeah, they do pit on lap 9. 
Awesome. To drink water. What do you think was in my bottle? Oh, big lip. Ten laps, and we're done. The first one that was really not that hard, especially with the pit thing. But they were gonna roll with the same setup. Evil <laughs> would just be like, "I'm playing Asphalt Nine forever." Hmm, one of these things is not like the others. You're so attention seeking. Ironic. Alright, Rome 2 is next. I'm not gonna do any other um upgrades. Wow, my stomach just crawled for like a solid ten seconds. Okay. We're gonna start in third gear like a mad lad. Watch this. It actually is viable. So now we gotta deal with the bullying again. Basically drive the exact same race in reverse. Whoa. It's so weird because they start off so strong, the AI, and then they just drop off. That guy just got pinched in a corner. I just got a free position because of that. I'm trying to protect the tires in this early part of the race because I don't want to like bully the AI, even though they bully me. I mean, the tires will obviously make it to the end, but I'm trying to see. They get them in their optimal operating window. You just dropped a lot of time on just that one corner. So now it's the last corner that hurts us instead of the first corner. We should still be strong in the middle sector, though. I just find it so funny that you guys call each other kids. So funny. Like, you may think as a 15 year old, oh, a 13 year old is so immature. But then wait till you're 20 and you hear a 15 year old and a 13 year old argue. It's gonna be really weird. You won't see it until a few years from now, but it is really, really funny. And I'm sure that effect gets even crazier the older you get.
So we're just chilling in fifth place, you know. Uh, Carlos signs P5 classic. Although he doesn't really get P5 anymore. He goes for the podium. I don't want to hang out in the back for the entire race and just like win on hit attrition. But I am kind of vibing with uh, the sixth place guy. The hairpin effect isn't as an extreme on this version of the track because you aren't going as fast. trying to like not hit the wall but you just need to break so much I need the downforce and it's not like TT4 we can just slap a wing on and be good whoa bully I got sandwiched in between a wall and a car get out of my way I lost a second and a half just from being punted I'm gonna punt this kid because he punts at me. Now we can try and work on a race again. I blame TikTok for all of this. I don't even say what this is. If you know, you know though. Alright. Three seconds. Let's try and knock that gap down without getting punted. Boom. How does it feel to be the sandwich now? I'm gonna go on the inside. Or not. Okay, he doesn't have to punt me. Maybe their tires are starting to drop off. Oh no, that was bad. I killed all my progress. I killed my progress even more. It really is going to be a hang out with them until they pit on lap 9 sort of deal, isn't it?
it's a messy race for sure. Play asphalt nine. How about no? You know what's funny? Um, is someone commented on my video that you have to check out the Hennessy Venom F5. Little did they know that I drove the Venom F5 on stream in a test drive when it first dropped. I gave my quick thoughts on it. But... I mean, did I drive it on stream? I don't even remember. I know I drove it, and I know I was talking about it on stream. But... I'm fully aware of what's going on, I just really don't care to play. Alright, let's try and finally get the lead. I absolutely drove the Venom. I know I have at least on my own time. I forget if I have driven it on stream. But I thought I did. It came out in like June or something, right? Seven laps and we finally have a lead. I don't know, someone will find it. Swag Sense says I did. So I trust him. I'm pretty sure I did drive it. And my thoughts were like, it's fast, but it feels kind of awkward to drive. I feel like when you're above 300 miles an hour, 500 kmh, it's um... The game becomes like really awkward to drive, and that's where the game breaks most of its physics. It's awkward to drive on a keyboard especially. You need to have precise control. Yeah, Jessica does it too. I don't know. The car stopped impressing me, because the only way to upgrade a car we get to that point is to dump thousands upon thousands of thousands of tokens, and it's just not, it's just not right. So looks like the AI dropped off heavily, because now I'm all of a sudden pulling a gap. The tire's probably going. That wasn't even my best lap. Looks like they're not pitting actually. We did need to do the passing on track. This is not Polyphony Digital, this is just Italian Avant Garde, which is um, just the Zondas. <laughs> we are not at Polyphony Digital Cup as much as I would like us to be at that stage. By now, we aren't. I do think now that I'm not studying for an exam at the moment, I might try to do midweek streams to try and knock out some of the real slugs of this game. I'll have to think about it, and then on the weekend we can do a different game entirely. 
but during the week we can grind GT3 maybe. We're getting to that point where the game's getting pretty grindy. We'll need to dump some hours. Who's gonna get pull and who's gonna win the race? I think Hamilton's gonna get pull, but I think there's gonna be a crash between Hamilton and Verstappen. I'm gonna say Charles wins the race. Just crazy prediction. A Hamilton pull, but the two title rivals crash again. And Charles is gonna win the race. That's my prediction. If I am right, I'm gonna actually flip. But there you go. My bold prediction. I can actually not get the fastest lap on those last two laps. Interesting. Looks like Zond has dropped off and they're 10 seconds back. So, another 30 grand. Still around a million credits, which is pretty good. So let's try to get a thumbnail shot. Alright. Well, good thing it was only a two-race series because, you know, it's nice to have one shorter race. I think that's the only two-race series, though, in the whole game, which is kind of sad. But, anyway, prize card time. So what do we get for doing a Zonda-only race? Hint, it's got a wing. It's a Zonda race car. Only fair. It's only fair that, you know, you can't buy the Zonda race car, you race them, and you win one. I just pink slipped one of the AI's cars. So there we go. Cool, crisp, and nice. And all that's left for IV licenses, these four one make championships, which are gonna absolutely suck, especially this one. This one's gonna be terrible. They'll, they'll get better. This is the best one of the four. Does this have Monaco at the end? It does, oh my god, they're so bad. Two of these have Monaco in them, which is just terrible. This is evil because it has test course. Just gonna be pain. This is where the pain starts. Either has Monaco or test course in all of these championships. So, great. Anyway. Go to our garage. We got a Zonda race car in the garage. 650 horsepower. Beautiful. And this is a fictional car. But GT did this livery perfectly, so I like it. I wish they made this car in real life, though. Anyway, 67.5% and 4,000 miles. And, um, yeah, pretty good. That's the end of the segment.